Today we have rarest of the rare guest Dr. Amol Thorat a prosthodontist and top tier implantologist breaking down the real future of implants in dentistry a personality which is known for sincerity perfection and excellence if you are a dentist wondering how many implants it takes to be confident or if implantology is even worth mastering this one's for you myself dr pratmesh and you're watching loosely prescribed Welcome to the podcast, sir. Thank you. I know you have been practicing implantology since a lot of good time. You are one of the teacher when I was learning implantology, so I thought I should invite you. And maybe the experience you have had, it's tremendous and it's very unique than the other implantologist. So, implantologist or maybe the dentist who wants to learn implantology, it is a very meaningful conversation for them. How much time it has been for you to practice general dentistry? I hardly ever practiced general dentistry. Finished my post graduation in 2003. Thereafter, bond, and I started my practice in 2005. Okay. So it's been like 20 years. This is 2025. So 20 years since I'm practicing, but it's been less of general dentistry because, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know. My wife is also a dentist. Mm-hmm. So I don't get too much to do of a general dentistry, yeah. and that was a blessing because I could then uh, pursue my passion. Mm-hmm. As I was always interested in implants, I started reading more and more about implants, doing more courses about implants, and it's been almost 20 years since I'm practicing implantology. Okay. I consider this is a very good time to uh, practice implantology. If I have to ask you how many number of implants have you placed roughly? Uh frankly speaking I have not counted. But uh, God has been kind to me. Uh, last few years it has been like almost uh, about 80 to 100 implants a month. <laughs> okay. So not that I'm doing 100 implants since 20 years. So mm-hmm. first year it was like maybe 6 or 7 implants. Mm-hmm. Then slowly gradually it increased in I think 2009 or 10 it was 100 implants in that mm-hmm. year. And thereafter the number just went on increasing. As of now it's roughly 80 to 100. So that comes to about 900 to 1000 implants maybe okay. in a year. Yeah. Out of your whole revenue how much revenue is been made by implants <laughs> like i don't say the number but at least i expect uh, the maybe about uh, 75% oh that is too much so there is this trend now ki every dentist wants to do implantology yes. maybe for the specialization maybe for the different reasons like money do you really think in 2025 they should opt implantology why not implant is the in thing how do you replace a missing tooth by a bridge bridge is obsolete bridge is absolutely obsolete so implant is the best treatment so in fact the statistics say that in india only about 3 or 4% of dentists are practicing implants <laughs> and i had a talk with a few of my korean colleagues and they say in korea it's the percentage is about 80% so 80% of the practicing dentists in korea practice implants as against 3 to 4% in india okay sir um, implant is something that has three branches of dentistry involved according to me when i was learning while you are placing the oral surgery part will come when you are giving the prosthesis the prosthetic part will come and to take care of gingiva the periodontal part will come What do you think? Which brand should offer implants? Like, कौन से brand से implants से सबसे नजदीक? So this always has been a topic of debate ever since I started practicing uh, implantology. <laughs> Whose domain is it? Every so, uh, on every uh, department yes, पे लिखा होगा कि implantology. Yes, uh, periodontics and implantology, yes. oral surgery and implantology. implantology. But as per the university, it's mm-hmm. branch one prosthetic dentistry and implantology. no according to university according to dci uh-huh. implantology is not in incorporated or uh, involved in the title of that degree for prosthodontics it's branch one prosthetic dentistry and implantology okay so it's not oral surgery and implantology at least in india but uh, let me tell you one thing that implantology is a prosthetically driven entity with a surgical component to it so it's basically a multidisciplinary approach mm-hmm. you have to plan the prosthesis and as per the prosthesis you plan your surgery surgical protocol okay sir in a country where root canal for 
an instruction for 1000 is expensive for the people do you think implant has future in a country like this in india we say still in 2025 that india is a developing country but uh, let me tell you one thing that india has got lot many numbers of mercedes and bmws <laughs> and audis Gee. and tesla is setting up their practice uh, their uh, factory market. in india and elon musk is not a fool so Gee. unless he has a market he will not uh, put up a factory in that country so don't tell me that people can't afford implants right Gee. if person can afford a smartphone why can't he afford an implant right. it's just the matter of priorities hmm you change your smartphone every 3 to 4 years huh. and you expect the implant to stay for maybe 10 20 30 years so i don't think uh, people can't afford implants it's just the matter of their perspective okay so a lot of different dentists are there that i'm talking to and a uh, few of them have one school of thought which is very rare different and interesting they say that when you do a root canal to a tooth आठ दस साल टिकेगा ज्यादा से ज्यादा आफ्टर दैट इट विल ड्रॉप आउट उसके बाद इम्प्लांट करना है या तो फिर रूट कैनल करने के बाद भी जो सक्सेस रेट है वो कम है अगर आठ साल बाद वही वही करना है इम्प्लांट वाई शुड यू डू द रूट कैनल तो इन अपकमिंग फ्यूचर पीपल वोट गो फॉर द रूट कैनल सीधा इम्प्लांट करेंगे सो हाउ मच डू यू सपोर्ट दिस स्कूल ऑफ थॉट सी आई कम फ्रॉम जी डी सी मुंबई एंड वेन आई वॉज अ स्टूडेंट Uh, just outside our prosthetic pre clinic there was a brown colored board which stated that uh, it is the perpetual preservation of what remains than meticulous restoration of what is missing hmm. so let me tell you and it is a divans dictum written by mm divan hmm. so let me tell you that implant is a replacement for a missing tooth okay we don't remove teeth to place implants a tooth has to go only when it is non salvageable so in my practice if a patient comes and if i feel that this tooth will remain say for 3 or 4 years at least mm-hmm. i advise a root canal i even though i am an implantologist i believe that you need to preserve the natural tooth structure as much as possible implant comes into picture when that tooth is lost ji when the tooth becomes non restorable if it is grade 2 grade 3 mobile or if it is completely fractured i can't restore it only then the implant comes into picture okay. as long as possible i'll try to save a natural tooth okay sir i have another question to ask mere paas bahut sare patients aate hain aur wo bolte hai ki sir jab mere paas ek bridge de doge aap jo bhi bridge hai uska cost bahut kam hai to implant kyu dalu main ब्रिज का कॉस्ट कम है बट ब्रिज के लिए बाजू के दांतों को भी कट करना पड़ता है विच आर प्रिस्टीन दे आर हेल्दी टीथ सो हाउ डू यू वे दैट पांच दस हजार रुपए बचाने के लिए यू विल रियली वॉन्ट टू ट्रीम यूर एडजेशन टीथ आई विल नॉट गो फॉर इट एंड अ पर्सन हु कैन अफोर्ड फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड सेवनटीन थाउजेंड रुपीज ब्रिज कैन डेफिनेटली अफोर्ड अ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव थousand rupees implant. and it's mm-hmm. not only about bridge when we prepare this adjacent teeth for a bridge mm-hmm. invariably if not on same day maybe 6 months year 2 years later that tooth goes for a root canal patient comes back with a sensitivity and we have to do a root canal so just calculate karo ki do root canals aur ek 3 unit bridge kitna kharcha hua it's more or less about 20 20 2000 rupees put add 3 4000 5000 rupees and you get an implant और बाजू के दांत जो अच्छे हैं वो तो अच्छे ही है वी आर नॉट टचिंग टीथ जी इन माय ओपिनियन मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि एक्सपेंसिव इज नॉट जस्ट रिलेटेबल टू द मनी एक्सपेंसिव है ब्रिज या इम्प्लांट बोथ आर एक्सपेंसिव अगर ब्रिज डालोगे तो इट इज एक्सपेंसिव हेल्थ वाइज एंड इम्प्लांट डालोगे तो इट्स मनी वाइज इन माई ओपिनियन अगर दोनों कट ही करने हैं उनका रूट कैनल का एक्सपेंस वापिस आएगा इन फ्यूचर वो भी फिर चार आठ साल टिकेंगे और वहाँ पर भी इम्प्लांट to expense is something which is health wise and the money wise so as this uh, saying says a stitch in time saves nine mm-hmm. so it would be better to have a preventive uh, way of treatment huh. so educate your patients to go for preventive care taki root canal tak naubat nahi aaye right to agar root canal hi nahi karna pada to why would the tooth break why would we remove it and why would we place the implants people are very very confused if they should get denture or implant supported denture 
what is your opinion on it see we all know that uh, denture has been given to the patients even before my birth okay but that time there was no other option now we have options even during our ug time bds time we were taught that we give a denture and the resorption of the underlying ridge continues throughout life mhm so every maybe 4 5 years 6 years we need to change the dentures and the second denture the subsequent denture will never fit the same like the previous one right that is because of continued resorption mhm in case of implants when we place an implants the bone surrounding the implants is preserved okay these implants will support even if you are giving a denture and not a fixed prosthesis the cutting efficiency the biting efficiency the chewing efficiency of the patient is improved to like many fold as against conventional complete dentures so whenever possible try to place implants beneath the denture and your patient can eat much much better apart from that apart from the chewing efficiency uh, the fitting of the prosthesis is improved with the help of the attachments that we give on the implants so sure. it is always better it is convenient to the patient comfortable to the patient and if the patient can eat properly naturally his or her uh, health would improve so given an option always go for implants okay for a dentist who is just graduated or maybe the dentist who wants to do implantology if they or maybe when i was in that stage when i was looking for different type of courses two different type of courses came one is basal implantology and the conventional implantology which one they should opt in 2025 see i would personally recommend a fresh graduate huh to get into general dentistry <laughs> for a couple of years at least 2 years 3 years 4 years same spend some time in general dentistry get a feel know how to treat a patient okay. coming to basal implants or conventional implants both of them have their place in implantology okay okay basal implants is based on certain principles uh-huh. mostly of orthopedics conventional implantology is based on a principle like you place a titanium fixture in the bone the bone forms over the fixture wait for till the uh, wait till that time and uh, then you load the implant okay. okay so both will have different schools of thought but both of them have their own indication in implantology so it's not about basal or conventional it's basal and conventional i practice both but each of them will have their own indications so my advice to a fresh graduate would be to spend some time in general dentistry learn dentistry get a hang of it and then opt for implants and then it's not only i will learn only basal or only conventional you have to learn both, both. to understand their limitations and to adv- understand their advantages what is your view on basal implants that's what i said i mean it has got its own place only thing is uh, they have some uh, limitations as to prosthetics hmm. because their emergence is narrow okay so aesthetically if you want to place uh, basal implants in aesthetic zone it may not be the right choice Achha. but uh, suppose i have a very old patient say in his 80s or 80 late 80s little frail and with very very poor bone has mm-hmm. been using denture for say 20 30 years and uh, what are the options he doesn't have bone so will i go to zygoma and pterygoid and such invasive procedures for that patient i would not do that right. so in that case i would go for basal implants because most of the basal implants we place flapless and aesthetics is not the major concern the patient has to eat patient wants to eat to eat so we need to understand the patient's expectations so in those cases i would go for basal but like a person like you and me coming with a uh, say missing central incisor i would not go for basal uh-huh. because i know it won't give me the same aesthetics Gee. at our age at a younger age in the aesthetic zone we want aesthetics so over there i have more prosthetic uh, options with conventional implants okay i had talk with one patient he told me sir mera ek daant missing tha main implant ke liye gaya ek dentist ke paas usne bola ko to implant dal denge तीन चार दिन बाद दा दे दूंगा तो और इंडियन मेंटालिटी के हिसाब से ही वेंट टू अनदर डेंटिस्ट उसने बोला मैं इम्प्लांट डालूंगा दो ढाई महीने के बाद ही दाँत दूंगा क्यों इतना क्यों ऐसा डिफरेंस है दोनों में 
See, a uh, conventional protocol says that you place the implant and you wait for four months. Brenemark gave this protocol 50 years back. <coughs> but okay. now the surfaces have changed. The designs of implants have changed. Our understanding of bone has changed. So in most of the cases, especially in aesthetic zone, in anterior zone, we place the implant and we can load those implants immediately. If not with uh, permanent prosthesis, at least with a temporary prosthesis so mm -hmm. that the patient doesn't have to go without teeth for mm -hmm. so long. Okay. So I immediate implants can be done. Immediate loading also can be done on those implants. Achha. It's not like you can give patient an implant in every medical science, there is no thumb rule in medical science. So there is nothing 100%. You have to plan the treatment with patient in the center of the planning. What is best suited for the patient has to be planned. I can't say I will put an implant in every case and I will put an implant in every case. There mm -hmm. are certain criteria which need to be met with. Okay. What would you choose between sinus lifts or zygomatic or pterygoid? <laughs> Good question. Uh, again, as I said, depending on the patient, who the patient is. Mm -hmm. If the patient is a 60-year-old guy with one or two millimeters of bone and single tooth missing, I would not go for a single zygoma. I would do a direct sinus lift and wait for six, eight months and then replace. But if the entire segment is missing, four, five, six, seven is missing and we don't have any bone in the molar region or maybe even second premolar region, then mm -hmm. what is the option? You place so much of a graft and wait for a year and patient is not able to eat from that side for a year. Then that is impractical. In that case, I would go for tilted implants. I would go for pterygoid implants. I would go for zygoma or for that matter, even a trans sinus. Achha. So depending on the patient. Like you and me uh, lose six first molar. <laughs> I would not go for a single zygomatic implant. Mm. Sinus lifts are very, very predictable. So according to patient's condition, patient's age, patient's requirement, we would decide whether to go for a sinus lift or tilted implants. Recently, there are many articles on one thing. That is, short implants, 6 abab, etc. What is your view on this short implants? It's not that the short implants came just now. Short implants have been in market for a long time. All these years, uh, even the literature says, if you are placing a short implant, try to avoid one short implant. Place one short implant along with one longer implant, probably, and join both of them so that there will be better stress distribution. But the studies and literature nowadays say that once the implants have integrated, the occlusal forces are not transmitted beyond 4 millimeters from the crest. So okay. if you are talking about 6 or 7 millimeters implant, once it integrates, I am not saying that you have to load immediately. Don't load those short implants immediately. But after integration, uh, if they are like 6 or 7 millimeter long, they should function. Because occlusal forces are not transmitted beyond 4-5 millimeters. <laughs> so if you have a 6 or 7 millimeter implant, it should work. Right. Now on Instagram, there are many implant courses ads कुछ six week program है, कुछ one week program है, कुछ module wise है, या फिर कुछ one month, कुछ one year के भी है. What do you think? What duration is sufficient or enough to learn implants?